Hey again all, this is Dana here. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to use Max Stitch. Uh, the version I have is the beta 2015 version, uh, but pretty much any uh, version that you have will be quite similar in operation. I just want to say up front, I've said this in a few different blog posts and whatnot, I am not affiliated at all with the, the program uh, makers, which is Ursa Software. I just really like this program. I find it uh, quite um, useful for what I'm using it for, and I just thought it'd be neat to make a video and show some of the options that I find quite useful and, uh, yeah, just do, do a really basic tutorial. Uh, I'll be going through some of the functions. There's a lot of them that I don't use, and I'm still learning the program myself, but uh, in this video you should learn some basic tips about how to at least start uh, importing your image and things that you can do in the program to uh, adapt your pattern. So what I've done is I've opened up the program, obviously, and I'm going to be importing this little image here. So what I do is I use the advanced import options. So if I go in here, you can click advanced image import, and it's going to open up that. So here's my image here. Uh, you can see that you can actually change the size of your width of your chart. So right now it's 39.9 inches by 30 inches, basically. You can, for this one, particular one, you can go up to 70 inches by 53 inches. Obviously that's going to be very, very detailed. It's going to come out amazingly photographic-like, but that's going to be a gigantic piece. So it sort of depends on uh, what size, what finish size you'd like. So this slider here is where you would determine your finished size of your piece. Uh, for this one I will set it at about 20 inches across. The next setting here is your stitches per inch. So I usually stitch at 14 count. Uh, for the sake of this pattern I'm going to import it as 25 count just so you can see some of the, the detail that comes up with this uh, pattern software. It can produce some really, really beautiful patterns. Obviously, depending on your finish size and your stitches per inch, the lower those are, you know, you're going to be losing some detail simply because there's no possible way you could stitch uh, a huge amount of detail in a smaller piece on smaller thread count. Uh, this setting here, the border uh, margin, I tend to not use that at all. It's uh, in stitches. So I don't really have a border on my pattern, which is fine. And this one, this is quite a useful function actually. Uh, this is the maximum colors. So you can leave it as is, which is uh, basically what it's going to do is it's going to determine the amount of colors that this particular pattern, or this photograph I should say, should have to replicate it as best as possible. But as you can see, there's actually quite a lot of options. <clears throat> So you can see right now, if I leave it as uh, NA, as it's choosing how many uh, colors it wants to use, you can see that the preview button here is actually grayed out, which means I can't click on it. So that means that the preview function does have some limitations, but it's kind of neat in that, for example, if I choose 15 colors, the preview function is working. And I'll show you that in a second. First, I'm going to go down here and choose DMC, which is the threads I always use. <clears throat> Another setting here is saturation. You can change the way that the image gets imported a little bit. You can make it more saturated or less saturated, the coloration. I tend to do any uh, coloration issues, changes to, to major issues in the photograph or the artwork before I even import it. I use like a Photoshop, a version of Photoshop online. And also here you can import it as stitches or as beads if you're wanting to make the piece beaded or uh, if you're doing it on plastic canvas. There's lots of ways to do that. Dithering I'll explain in a minute. I'll actually show you how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a preview. So we're going to do it at uh, 11. Oh, hang on. It changed. Let's go back to 20. Sometimes it will change the finished size depending on your stitches per inch. So it's going to be 20 by 15. Uh, 25 count, 15 colors maximum. So I'm going to do a preview here. The mask just means, uh, yeah, you can make a little automatic frame on it. I don't ever use that function. 
All right, so we're going to do preview here. So there you go. So that's 15 colors on 25 count at the 20 by 15 size, 25, 20 inches by 15 inches. So as you can see, this is, <coughs> excuse me, as I mentioned, this is using the dithering uh, option. So what dithering is, it tries to basically make up for the fact if you're not using very many floss colors, it tries to make up for tonalities and shading by actually scattering colors in areas almost like um, a shotgun blast, trying to make more tonalities exist to make up for the fact that you're not using as many colors. So what I'll do, so that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's with dithering turned on, so you can have a look at that. And then I'll turn dithering off and leave everything else exactly the same. Do the preview again. And you can see all that little roughness has actually disappeared. So the image looks quite different. I always prefer using it uh, without dithering. I, I like this look a lot better. It, to me it looks a lot cleaner. The gradations look a lot more beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I quite like it like that. But what I'll do is I'll show it to you with more colors as well. So this is a 15 colors. I think it, you can kind of see the original here. I actually really, really like how this one's come out. So what I'll do though is put it up to 30 colors. And you can see the preview button is still not grayed out. So that means you can still do a preview. If it is grayed out, you can still obviously make a pattern out of it. It's just not, you're not going to be able to preview it. Yeah, and again, this is with 30 colors, and it's really, really pretty. I actually really like how the background is coming out. It's a little different than the actual photograph, but I think it actually looks really, really cool. So I think I might keep it like that. Done. So once you're happy with all of your settings, so whether you choose dithering or not, your saturation, things like that, your size, then you can, once you're ready to import the image, you hit OK. And hey presto, the big black screen. No, just kidding. What I'm going to do is make this bigger so you can see a bit more. So you can see even though I chose 30 colors, up to 30 colors, it actually didn't choose anywhere near 30. That's probably closer to about 20, 22 just by eyeballing that. So the reason you can't see the full image is right now it's set at 20%. If I drop it down to 10, then you're going to start seeing more of the detail. I'm just going to scroll down here a bit. There's the center of the flower there. Yeah, so you can see it's come out really quite nicely. It'd be a very beautiful pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to zoom a little, little bit so you can see some of these other options up in the menu up here. It's hard to do if it's too zoomed out. Okay, I'm just going to zoom into the center of the flower so you can kind of see a little bit more what's going on. Okay, so there we go, that's the center of the flower. So up here you've got a bunch of different options, this bottom row of options here. You've got color blocks, which is what it's being shown as right now, so your, which is this column here, that's all your color blocks. So you can click on that. Symbols, so that's this second column here in between your color blocks and your your color number. So this would be perfect if you're uh, wanting to just print it off in black and white. Um, a lot of people would use this. Obviously you'd be zooming it in more so you can actually read the chart, which is always handy. <coughs> Excuse me. The next one is kind of neat. It's using the symbols, but as you can see, it's actually using the symbols in the color block. So it's kind of cool. So this is also an option if you have a color printer. One that I tend to really like is this one here, which is the color block with the symbol overlaid. So this is what I tend to use when I'm doing my patterns. I actually, um, instead of printing out the pattern, I actually take a photograph of uh, this, this part of the screen with my camera and uh, then use that as my pattern. I'll, I'll do like a big section at a time and then move on to the next section, things like that. You can also display their pattern as stitches, which is quite cool. I will zoom out a little bit so you can see more. This stitches option is kind of neat in the sense that um, 
when you export this, and I'll show you some of the export functions in a little bit, when you export this, you can actually set uh, your main image to be stitches. So it kind of looks like the pattern as it would if it was stitched, which is quite a neat function. You can also set it to be tent stitch. So that's if you're obviously not doing a full cross, you're just doing the one direction, doing tent stitch. And then the last one is balloons. This one is really good at replicating what it would look like if it was beaded, which is actually really quite beautiful. That would take a really long time, but it's really beautiful. So those are your bottom options here. I'm going to flip it back to this one, because that's the one I tend to use. Obviously, the more zoomed out you are, you're not going to be able to actually read the symbols. You'd have to zoom in a fair amount to be able to actually read the symbols. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one feature that I do use sometimes. Occasionally, I will want to change uh, a color. So there's two ways to change a color in this program, or there's actually quite a few ways, but the two ways that I use I'm going to be doing is, uh, there's the first way is to change the color across the entire piece. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So I'm just going to randomly choose a color. I don't even know which one is which. I'm just going to randomly choose this dark cyclamen pink here. And I'm going to decide to change it to a blue. So what I would do is I would highlight the color that I'm wanting to change. Then go into the palette menu. The palette menu has a lot of really, really cool options in it. And then you would go replace active thread with. And this is only if you're wanting to change all of the uh, stitches in your pattern with into a new color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a really wild color that's not already in my palette over here so that you, you can see the difference. I might choose this really mint green, the light forest green. So anything that is this dark cyclamen and pink is now going to become this light forest green. You can also change the manufacturer here. And you can actually change, you can actually search a color number too if you happen to know the number that you're looking for. Alright, so I'm going to hit replace. So there you go. Anything that was the pink has now become green. Which is actually kind of cool. Like, I wouldn't keep it like that, but it's kind of a neat effect. So you can do some really quite cool things with this if you want to make some quite psychedelic looking images or really. Um, play with different tones this is kind of a neat function. So your undo function on the program is this little lifesaver here, your little life preserver. So I'm gonna, oh, for some reason it says unable to undo. Occasionally it would do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change it back. Usually the undo function works, but I found sometimes uh, if you do something in between then it can't remember what it did last. I'm going to replace the active thread with, and I remember the color number, 3804. That's that one there. And replace. And there we go, we're back to where we started from. Alright, so that's one way to change a color. So that obviously is going to be changing all of the stitches across the entire piece. There's another way to do it. You can either do uh, a rounded section here or a square section. I'll do a square section just to make it a little bit more visible. And what I'll do is I'll choose part of this area here. So this little pop-up menu here has a lot of neat options. It seems to be more for if you're create if you're designing your own pattern, for example, say a, a border edge or something like that, or a motif that you would like repeated, this menu here will allow you to flip it, turn it around, upside down, backwards, uh, flip it around an axis, uh, erase back stitch, erase French knots and beads, things like that. So that's, it seems this menu seems to be good for uh, if you're doing like a repetitive type pattern. I tend to not do those kind of patterns. I do mainly either photographs I've taken like this one or uh, my own artwork. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back up into the palette menu here. So we're still selected down here. Go into the palette menu, and I'm going to do search and replace. 
So, as you can see, there's your dark cyclamen pink here. That's the one that I would like to replace. And as you can see here, this isn't the entire amount of threads that are in DMC, obviously. This is actually just your palette. So the search and replace function is quite good if you're just wanting to replace, say you've got two grays and um, you just want to change one gray to the other gray so, to, so you don't have to buy two different grays because they're really, really close to each other. The search and replace is a really good way to do that because you're only going to see the colors that are already in your palette. If you want to use other colors, then I can show you how to add colors to your palette down here in this little plus button, and, that, and then it will show up here. So let's just say I'm going to change the cyclamen pink to, let's change it to something different so you can really see it show up. I'll change it to the terracotta. All right, so only the stitches of the cyclamen pink inside this cropped area will change to terracotta. There you go. As you can see, there are a few in here that didn't change. That's because those ones aren't the cyclamen pink. It left all the other colors alone. It just changed that one color that I wanted to change. I'm going to undo that. So yeah, that's one really, really neat function that you can do. You can actually just select a really small area of your pattern and change just that, which is really quite cool. Uh, another thing that you can do, I'm going to zoom in a bit to show you this function. Another thing that you can do is you can just draw directly. So you can choose one of your colors or you can add another color to your palette here. So let's say I wanted to add this mint green to my palette. I'd simply select it. Again, you can change the thread family. You can change, you can choose a number and then you just simply add it to your palette here. All right, so let's save that. And you can see here, it's been added. It's got a new symbol and everything. So I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to draw directly with this color. So what you can do is you can actually just click, click, and change individually, or you can hold down your mouse, or in my case a trackpad, and just draw freehand, which is quite neat. So this is another way to for me, occasionally I'll go in and I'll add a few extra highlights to an area, particularly if I'm doing a face, I'll add a few extra highlights, um, I'll just change up a few of the details just to make things a little sharper. The import function does work really well, but because I tend to be working on my own artwork, I do change things up a little bit once I have imported it just to make it uh, a bit more suitable to cross stitch, because each media is a little different. So I'm going to undo that, so it goes back to white. All right, so that's how you can draw. Uh, up here, you have a whole bunch of symbols. And if you're ever really not sure what any of them are, if you go into your toolbar here, there's your description of all your different symbols. You've got beads, you've got different sizes of beads. Same with your buttons. You've got all kinds of knitting stitches. You can um, design this to be a knitting pattern. It's another really neat function of this. It's not just cross stitch. You can actually make it basically a tapestry because of the tenth stitch and you can also make it into a knitting pattern which is kinda cool it will actually change the um, I haven't tried it but from what I, I've read uh, it will actually change the stitches to instead of being square they will be slightly rectangular as a knitting stitch would be which I think is actually pretty cool You can do all kinds of really cool stuff with this you get your erase here that's your undo button that's the one I was talking about yeah so it's it's a pretty there's so many um, functions on this, and certain things like backstitch, I haven't used backstitch at all in my designs yet. I may well do in the future, for now I haven't. I don't use beads, I don't use French knots, um, I definitely don't use quarter stitches, three quarter stitches, all that. I use only full stitches, but yeah, there's a lot of functionality in this program. I mean you know, even just like how you can view it. You can change the grid line colors, you can make uh, the backstitch visible or invisible, you can make it an easy to read pattern by changing it to five um, grid lines every five stitches instead of every ten. So there, or by even by inch, which is good too, if it makes that, if that makes it easier for you. So I mean there's so much you can do with this program. It 
really, it's one of those programs you really need to play with and just sort of see how you want to use it. It has so much functionality. Um, you can do really simple things with it or you can do really, really complex things with it. So I really like it. You can actually even change your cloth color right there if you really like. It's a toolbar, your edit functions. Uh, again, you can rotate things, adjust the size for knitting. You can add emojis if you really want. Uh, your import and export. There's your advanced image import in case you wanted to start another piece while your program was already open. I always recommend the advanced image import just because it does have more options and you can get your uh, pattern a little bit more tailored to exactly what you want it to look like. You've got your preferences, so backstitch lettering style. There's just so much. So down here is your palette, which is here. That's your palette view here. You've got motifs, and these are all loaded in already. I tried adding one and it didn't work, but that was just my mistake. All kinds of neat stuff in here. So like, you've got angel fishes, beetles. So for example, if you wanted to add a beetle, it's 34 stitches by 34 stitches. So as an example, you just grab it, whoop, right? You drag it. I think I grabbed a bird. Maybe that's a panda, I'm not sure. Anyway, you just drop it wherever you want it. Bam. There's your new panda or whatever that is I accidentally grabbed. Undo that. Uh, so there's lots of motifs, and you can add your own as well. There's alphabets, there's all different kinds of alphabets. There's uh, special stitching like starbursts and textures. Um, and then here's your thumbnail view of your actual pattern. So this is this isn't the photograph that you imported, this is what your pattern is actually going to look like as a thumbnail. Because, as you can see, unless you have a gigantic screen, you can only get down to 10%. Actually, uh, oh, you can get down to, to uh, 0%. Well, it's not really 0%, obviously, but that's the smallest image that you're going to get. And then 10% is obviously much bigger. So, yes, yeah, so that's that. And I'll quickly show you uh, the export options. So I'll quickly go through this. So you've got your size of your paper that you want it to be printed onto or come out as a PDF. This will come out as a PDF uh, and a zip file if you'd like, or just as a PDF. You can do your margins. You can print the entire chart on one page, which obviously for a bigger chart is not recommended. Um, you can, uh, this is how many symbols across the page, so in this case it'll be 60. I wouldn't go any higher than 80, because it's getting really small. Uh, this is how many overlap you would like if you want any. So, uh, for example, if you're doing four pages, it's going to have a little bit of an overlap, like a shaded area, so you can match up your patterns when you're uh, changing pages. That's that. Your style. Again, you can choose which direction you want things, whether it's going to be symbols, color symbols, all that kind of stuff. I prefer the symbols on the color. Like that. Your thick line, thin lines. Whether you're going to have copyright on there. Preview page. I always choose the stitches option because I think that looks really cool. And you can choose to do it framed or not. Like that. Can change even the mounts and the inner mounts and all kinds of stuff. I tend not to do that one. Cover page. Uh, in this case, you would browse your computer for what you would like to use a, a cover page. You could use like a scan of a business card and it would come up full uh, size, or you could uh, make your own image for the cover page of the pattern. Your key. Again, you can choose what image. Uh, sorry, what information you would like. Uh, the color number. The color name how many strands you're using, which actually can be changed down here. So anything you hover over can be changed. So in this case, if I wanted to do more than two strands for the thread, you could just change it here. Beads, all kinds of stuff. Knots, so you can just click what you would like it to show, and then your metadata. And this would be for if you want it to be a PDF and a zip file as well. And you got some more settings down here. 
So I'm going to power, save it to my desktop. So it's processing it. Yeah, so depending on the size of the the image that you're, or sorry, the, the final pattern size will determine that how long it takes to export as a PDF. It won't take very long at all, but obviously if it's a little more complicated than, say, 20 by 20 stitches or whatever, it's going to take a, a few seconds for it to process it. So I'm just going to go to my desktop here. All right, drag, and there's my PDF. So for this one, I chose not to do a cover, a separate cover image. That was very odd. It's opening up a little bit differently than normally. I think it's just because I have a new version of uh, Adobe Reader, so it's looking a little different. Yeah, you can see. So it does come up really cool. And down the bottom of the pattern would be your legend and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, you can totally uh, change up how you want your PDF to export uh, all the options, whether you want a cover image, all that kind of stuff. All right, so that's the pattern. So there you go. So that's all I have to show for you for now. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask in the comment. Like I said, there's a lot of the functions that I don't actually use myself uh, simply because of how I personally use this program. But uh, definitely a lot of people uh, use things like the beads and the backstitch and the motifs. Like there's some like, even Ukrainian uh, style borders that you can uh, that are preloaded into this program that are really, really good. And it even has um, like in the uh, first menu. It even has a whole bunch of like templates and uh, sample. Like here you got all these sample charts. I won't bother opening them, but there's a lot in this program. If you uh, go to the Ursa Software website, uh, you can download either the WinStitch, which is for people with PCs, or Mac Stitch, which is obviously for Macs. Uh, there is a free demo version, and it has all the functionality of the actual program. The only thing is you cannot save your work, so you wouldn't be able to, say, print off the PDF or um, really stitch from it because you'd have to basically try and do your entire stitch in one sitting, which for this size is going to be clearly impossible. But the demo version is quite good, and it does give you a chance to import images. You can play around with the settings. You can do exactly what I've just done here and see what kind of detail you can get from the program. And it's well worth it. Like, I think it's a great program. As you can see, it's got a lot of functionality. It's got so much stuff you can do with the program. So I highly recommend it. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I'm happy to have feedback and comments and whatnot. And uh, that's it for now. Talk to you later. Bye.